How are you doing? Dermot Power back here again with another little slice of Waterford history. Uh, I know we're all browned off for this COVID-19 thing and people are co complaining they can't get out to the pubs, they can't get out to the restaurants, they can't go to the theatre. No music in pubs. Everyone is just totally browned off. What I'd like you to do for me, for you're sitting in your own home, switch on and off the light switch. Run the tap. Go in and flush the toilet. Go into the bedroom and jump on the bed. Probably semi-orthopedic or full orthopedic mattress. Very, very comfortable. So I'd like you to follow me back to the Waterford of 1851. We're walking down Barry Street and we see a police constable. These guys were over six foot tall at that time. He's turning into the mirror's walk. And he's walking towards a woman sitting down on the footpath up by Ballybrick and Church. She has appears to be what... A little bundle in her arm, so the constable goes over and all of a sudden he jumps back, recoils back. Why? Because it was a baby, a dead baby, a two-year-old dead baby she had in her arms. He inquired as to what happened to the baby and she said she had been walking down Barrack Street with the baby in her arms when the baby took a few gasps of breath and died in her arms. So he brought her to the relieving officer and then up to the workhouse where they took her back in. She said that she had been in the workhouse since the previous Christmas and that she had the baby with her and that the baby was sick and she had applied a few times for bread and milk but she didn't get it. Now there was a dispute over some of the facts because an inquest was held so what I'm talking about and from is the details from the inquest. Dr. Elliot, the, the doctor in the workhouse, and he said that as far as he was concerned that the, the children did get bread and buy milk. He said that, yes, the woman came to him several times. Her name was Mary McMahon. The child was Bridget McMahon. And Dr. Elliot said that the room in the workhouse where the babies are kept, would only facilitate 25 to 35 children. But it was occupied by 60 to 80 children. And he said that he had tried without success to get the workhouse guardians to change that or else to move the children someplace else, as happened around uh, Ireland. Now he said this was quite common in Ireland to have these children uh, wards overcrowded and as a result that many of them died of ailments of the stomach and that's exactly what the child had he called it a softening of the stomach and he said that children like that usually die uh, of diseases of the stomach and bowels it was an absolutely dreadful situation that the woman found herself in he said that he gave the woman some medicine for the baby but as quite happened in the workhouse that she drank it on several occasions now you might think to yourself my god that's terrible but these women in the workhouse particularly probably young women had nothing to excite their lives intellectually or otherwise nothing it was just dull dull dreary and we now understand because of covid that people are as i said going off of their heads because of this there is no stimulation to our our, our social lives and we're social creatures and it was exactly the same in the workhouse. So when they got the medicine, they could have been, some of the medicine could have had a narcotic effect or alcohol or whatever. And they drank it. And that was a little momentary uh, relief from the dreariness of the workhouse. The female in charge, the nurse in charge of the ward said that she knew uh, Mary McMahon very well. And she was a woman of a violent temper. Again, very understandable that people would be up there and they would be sort of like on a very short fuse and that's very very understandable another item that came out uh, of, of the inquest was something that uh, mary mcmahon said as to why she was over on the mayor's walk when the constable asked her and she said that she had left the workhouse with the baby and that she had gotten lodgings for the night a room for the night on condition that she would get some a wisp of straw and the reason she was over on the mirror's walk 
was to buy a wisp of straw. And I know exactly where she was probably going. And if you come around from Ballybricken, you know the pub on the corner, the tap room, walk around the corner, walk down the side of the tap room that's on the Mayor's Walk, and just as you get beyond uh, the tap room, there's a gateway in there. That is the little lane that was known as Straw Lane. A very, very old lane, Straw Lane it was called. The reason it was called Straw Lane is because that's where straw was kept for fair days and that. And people used to go up and buy straw. She was buying, as I said, what was called a wisp of straw to lie down on herself and her baby. But alas, her baby died. Absolutely terrible times. Absolutely. Now, we marginally understand. We will never, ever, ever be able to comprehend the hopelessness and the drudgy. But something else, and it's only my belief, is that that woman was very upset over the death of her baby, her two-year-old baby. But nonetheless, I guess that she felt relieved that at least she won't have, the, the, I won't say the responsibility, but the burden of trying to bring up a child in 1851 Ireland. Now, I have a list of people who applied for entry to the workhouse in 1844. And it's amazing to read it because you will find there's about 20 to 30 people, about 20 people on, on the list. And that half of the women on the list were after deserting their husbands and children. And half of the men were after deserting their wives and children. So that will indicate the level of hopelessness in people's lives. And it was essentially every man for himself. Now, somebody asked me, do I have any happy stories to tell? The fed up of all the sad ones. And when you're dealing with Waterford in that period of time, no. There's no happy stories for the poor of Waterford. In 1851 and for a long time after. And regarding the deaths of the children, um, again, some of the, the younger people may not know this, but right up to the early 20th century, there was a high proportion of infant deaths in families. My own great-grandmother had seven children. Four of them lived. And there you go, that was it. Those were the days. So that's the little story for this week. So talk to you very soon with another one. I'll see if I can find a happy one for you.